For me, it was useful, especially because I felt a bit stuck about my photography wedding prices because I had some uh, prices for last year and the year before. Uh, which I moved a little bit uh, to put it higher. But then I felt a bit stuck about that. And I wanted the coaching session to be really about my pricing because mm -hmm. I didn't know if I could put my prices higher or not. I didn't know how to do that. I felt a bit stuck about that because I was not comfortable with the fact uh, that I could actually put my prices higher and I needed uh, some help to be sure of myself about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what you're speaking to is so prevalent in the industry. There are so many photographers that I see. This is like one of the biggest fears that I always see. I'm scared to increase my prices. When I first started my wedding photography business back in 2011, I made just $5,000 in my business. Now I bring in multiple six figures per year while working only 30 hour weeks serving my dream couples. I'm here to help you discover that it's so possible to have what you want when you want in your business so that you can create the life you've always dreamed of and deserve. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Shine and Thrive podcast, episode 39. And this is a very special podcast for me because it actually comes out on the one year anniversary of the Shine and Thrive podcast. Um, my amazing virtual assistant, Rachel, the other day was like, by the way, Sarah, do you know that next week is the anniversary of your podcast? And I'm like, what? Oh my gosh, thank you so much for letting me know because I would have possibly missed it. So yeah, the day this recording comes out is the anniversary, November 5th. Um, so that's really exciting. I can't believe that for a year and a half uh, before the podcast came out, I was kind of too scared to even put this together. I kind of, I didn't know, you know, how to use my voice and exactly what to focus on. So it took some time to get there and also get through like roadblocks of like, what will other photographers think of me and all of that. So yeah, I, I just can't believe it's already here. And I just wanted to mention that because it's really fun to be on the other side of fear. So you know how we all have those fears that stop us from growing, moving forward, actually achieving our dreams. So me just mentioning that makes, I, I want it to help you realize that, hey, if you just start taking those action steps towards your dream goal, maybe in a year, you're, you'll actually be there just like I am right now. So talking about fear, I'm also really excited about this podcast episode because I actually have one of my coaching students, Sam, joining me. And I mainly just wanted to put this episode together for you to get inspired by her transformation. So not only did, what did she learn from me, but she also took action and was able to create positive changes in her business, not only for you to learn her uh, like her transformation but to also feel less alone in your fears and realize that all photographers feel that way no matter what chapter they are in no matter whether they're one year in five years in ten years in we all have fears of getting to the next level and this is just an episode which will show you that yeah you're not alone and hopefully it'll give you that nice kick in the ass to put in the actions that will get you the results that you are after. So welcome, Sam. I'm so excited to connect with you and have you on here and especially on the anniversary episode, which I totally even forgot to tell you that it is. So yeah, welcome. <laughs> Hi, congrats oh, for thanks. that. It's so cool. <laughs> I I didn't know it was the, the first anniversary. So yeah, congratulations. It's so cool. <laughs> oh, thank you. And yeah, I'm so excited to dive into your, your mindset and the transformation that you went through and the fears that you had. I'm just so excited to dive in. But before we go there, I definitely want to start off with some icebreakers, some fun icebreakers. So I have some fun questions lined up for you. And oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just have fun with it. <laughs> we can do that. definitely. <laughs> okay. So what is your favorite thing to do on your own? Um reading a book nice. or um, drinking my tea with milk. <laughs> nice. What kind of tea? What's your favorite tea? 
It's like the Christmas tea, we call that in Switzerland. It's spicy and black tea and yeah, it's the Christmas tea. So I drink it like now in November. <laughs> That's so and awesome. no, shame, no shame about that. <laughs> <laughs> it must be so cozy. I'm all into tea now it too. Is. <laughs> oh, you're drinking it right now. That's perfect. Yeah, I am totally, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, what Christmas tea has in there? Is it like kind of like cinnamon and... Kind of that's it warm. yeah yeah and some spices I can't mm -hmm. name that but yeah maybe I, I think it's yeah it's cinnamon and something else I don't know I'm not sure about that <laughs> orange yummy. orange definitely yeah that's awesome okay so if you could choose any age to remain forever which age would you choose I think it would be right now Ooh. 20 27 yeah I think because I'm very happy, even if we are in a very strange period of life. I think, yeah, definitely I could live not in that period of life, definitely, but in my 27th year because, yeah, I am happy right now. That's awesome. I love that perspective. <laughs> okay. What did you get into the most trouble with your parents as a kid? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> hmm. So random. <laughs> Maybe when I fall in a river because I was playing around. Uh, I don't have the name in English because for the people who is listening to that, I'm a Swiss girl. So I speak French, uh, actually. So my English is sometimes not so good. <laughs> um, I can't remember the name, but it was near to a river and I fall down in that big part of water. And my mother told me like a thousand times not running around that and I actually fall down in that and I got wet oh. and I got very ill for one week then. So oh I got no. in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's so funny. Your little rebel you. By the way, your accent is so cute. So <laughs> thank you. Own it. It's so adorable. <laughs> um, what is your biggest pet peeve? My what? Sorry. Your oh, your biggest pet peeve. So something that's like annoying that like an annoyance of yours, maybe that other people do, or that's mm. in the world right now, not even just right now, just overall. Uh, maybe people being all the time annoyed by something. I mean, uh. I am a very, I don't have the name, positive woman. I think I love being positive and being careful with people and saying positive things, having a positive mindset. And I don't like people being all the time annoyed by things and saying, oh, I'm ashamed of that or, oh, I don't like that. Yeah, it's, I don't like that. <laughs> I love that. And I could totally feel it off you, like that energy that you have. <laughs> Thank you. Totally. It's, yeah, it's like a light, nice energy to be around. And it's actually funny because you basically just said, because I don't know if yeah. um, in Switzerland, pet peeve, I guess it's just the language barrier. Maybe it's not like, yeah, a maybe I didn't have the word. I don't, I don't yeah. know that. But what's cool is that you basically said that you don't have one. And that's just the most positive, amazing, beautiful thing <laughs> answer ever. So thank you thank for that you. answer. <laughs> okay. And last question. Mm -hmm. um, so do you set New Year's resolutions? And if so, what was one of yours this year and have you kept it? Um, I usually don't set the New Year's resolutions, but I set like week or monthly resolutions and I don't all the time keep them. <laughs> I mean, I'm like sometimes waking up, I'm saying, okay, so this week I'm doing that and that's like walking around outdoor, taking time for myself, working a bit less. And then in the in the end of the week or a month later, I'm like, mm, I need to do that next month. And so I'm full of good resolutions and sometimes I don't keep them. But this year I wanted to take more time for myself. And actually, I think I did. Uh, maybe because of those lockdowns, because we had to take time for us. Mm -hmm. But I think I am happy um, with that situation because I actually uh, took more time for myself. Yeah. That's awesome. I totally feel you. You basically just said, yeah, I'm human. I set goals and <laughs> yeah, maybe. don't achieve all of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's totally that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Now that we have a little <laughs> bit of insight into your personality, personality. Yes. I don't know why oh I always, God. it's a commercial <laughs> in Canada that was out like years ago. And every time I say the word personality, I have to sing it like that. <laughs> okay. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. I figured. But I can dance too. 
<laughs> yeah, I just started <laughs> dancing and Sam just started dancing on this. Okay, screen. people is going to see the YouTube video definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, let's get into diving in deeper into what we said we were going to talk about. So back in August, you booked a coaching session with me. Mm-hmm. So can you share where or how you felt stuck in your business then? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, Actually, in August, it was a bit confusing for me because we had the first lockdown in Switzerland. Uh, I don't know the situation in Canada, but for us, it was very hard because I had like 12 weddings uh, which were cancelled. So I... I am a wedding photographer since seven years, but I left my job last year to be a full-time photographer. So it was a bit hard because it was only my second season doing that full-time. So losing 12 weddings, I was confused. I was a bit lost and I was like, okay, what can I do now to be more confident and to, yeah, just have more faith about next year and other years. And yeah, I was following you uh, on Instagram and I was thinking about coaching since two, three, four months. I can't remember since a lot of time. And I was like, okay, maybe this is the right time to do something and to, yeah, to start Start having uh, coaching to go somewhere else. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I, I think it's, yeah, what happens when we get forced to slow down? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we realize that, okay, if I have this abundance of time, like we have two choices either kind of let all the negative and worrisome thoughts take over, and then you want to just lose yourself in just TV and making the excuse of like, oh, well, I can't control what's happening. So I'm just going to get a little lazy and, and just like relax and just watch TV, which there's nothing wrong with that because there's seasons for it. But mm-hmm. I guess the energy that you had at that time was you were, you're like, okay, let me figure out how I can grow yeah. right with this time. So mm-hmm. that's, that's incredible. And, um, yeah, wait, like for you to be in your second year of going, you said you, um, you left your full-time job a year yeah. before. Yeah. It was in 2019. Yeah. Right. So not this year, but last year in March, because, uh, I was doing weddings since seven years, but then I left my job to do it full part time. So I, was in my second season full part. Is that the word? Yeah, I don't have the word. Yeah, full, yeah second season full time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only the second season full time. The year before I had like five, 10 weddings, but then last year it was a big year. So yeah, it was a nice year and I was expecting more and more weddings for this year. I would have had like 30 or 35 weddings and then, yeah it was different because of this virus, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I totally, I feel for you because I know what it's like to finally (laughs) take the leap into going full-time and then for the first year to have what you went through. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. It just, it just shows your resilience of how you're like, no, I'm going to take the, make the choice for myself to figure out and work through it. Um, Okay. That's amazing. I feel like we're going to, we might circle back to that. Mm -hmm. Um, But okay, so why did you choose then to do a coaching session rather than figuring everything out yourself? Um, For me, it was useful, especially because I felt a bit stuck about my wedding uh, prices, my photography wedding prices, because I um, had some uh, prices for last year and the year before. Uh, which I moved a little bit uh, to put it higher. But then I felt a bit stuck about that. And I wanted the coaching session to be really about my pricing because Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I could put my prices higher or not. I didn't know how to do that, uh, especially because I was um, living for my wedding photography at that time. It was the first year I was, uh, finan- um, how do you say that? Well, with the money, I was living of photography, uh, my of my wedding photography, sorry. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I felt a bit stuck about that because I was not comfortable with the fact uh, that I could actually put my prices higher and I needed uh, some help to be sure of myself about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what you're speaking to is so 
prevalent in the industry. There are so many photographers that I see. This is like one of the biggest fears that I always see. I'm scared to increase my prices. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I, I'm going to share a little just piece of what you said, because when yeah. I do coaching sessions, I send questionnaires so that I can be fully prepared uh, for mm-hmm. that time we have together. So I'm just going to share with with, um, with everyone what you mentioned. And obviously this was with uh, Sam's permission. So she said in the questionnaire, so my insecurity is my prices. I've been in the photography business for seven years. First wedding was in 2013. And now I photographed my 67th wedding. I'm really happy because it is working. Like my business is working. 30 weddings I had expected for this year, but COVID changed things. But I always doubt my prices and I'm afraid of making my rates even higher. I hope I can become more confident about that. And then you also shared that your weakness is the fact that I don't think I will book people if I have Mm. higher prices. So I actually, I think I remember vividly when we were Mm -hmm. on the call, I repeated that word to that sentence to you. And I Mm -hmm. asked you, is it a fact that people won't book you if you have higher prices? Mm -hmm. And I I remember you're like, no, (laughs) but you were just like, but how do I do it? Sarah? How do I do it? Right. Yeah. So what helped you get over that fear? Mm -hmm. What did you get out of the call, the session that helped you get over that? I think, first of all, we are very on our own when we are wedding photographers or photographers because we work for ourselves. We don't have a team around. Uh, We usually, I mean, we don't have another photographer working with us uh, beside us. So it's very hard to share things and to be colleagues, actually, to be, yeah, to be very um, friendly with other photographers. It's not something that uh, we actually are used to do. Uh, And yeah, for me, it was very hard to share with another photographer and talk with another one and say, okay, what are your prices? Do you want to talk about that with me? Usually we don't do that. So it helped me to focus on those prices and say to myself, okay, you can increase your prices and you can still be in the ethic you want to be because I don't have very high prices, but I am in the industry for Switzerland. I am in the, yeah, in the, how do you say that? Um, I am in the same prices as the other photographers. So it's totally okay. But as I have seven and in uh, six months, eight year of wedding photography, I needed to, to represent also my experience and to increase the prices because of that experience. And I think I just had to have someone telling that to me as you did. So just to have the maybe impulsion, do you say that the as a thing the permission or or, an inspiration yeah maybe more the just do that the someone telling me okay you can do this and you can be confident doing that you know yeah yeah I'm taking a moment to pause this episode to share an exciting free resource with you that I know you'll definitely want to take advantage of It's a space where I'll be going live at a minimum every two weeks to answer your questions, along with content to keep you motivated in between podcast episodes. It's a way for us to connect about photography, business, personal development in an uplifting, productive, and safe space. This free resource I'm telling you about right now is the Shine and Thrive podcast community on Facebook. What I felt was missing with me just podcasting was actually interacting with you and answering the questions you have along the way. I know what it feels like to feel stuck, and at times all you need is that one question answered or that kick in the ass, well, you know, in the best way possible, to get your momentum going again. In short, I want to be there for you to answer your questions so that you can achieve those big and exciting results you dream of. The Ask Me Anything live sessions I'll be doing every two weeks are exclusive only to this community, so you want to make sure to join and get your question ready for me. So head over to Facebook right now, type in Shine and Thrive Podcast Community and request to join. We will be waiting for you on the other side with open arms. I cannot wait to connect with you. Okay. If I'm trying to think of like mindset wise, right. Mm -hmm. 
mindset shift did you have from going scared and not feeling, being scared that people won't book you with that pricing, especially the whole mindset. Basically, I like to call it like a mind fuck of like, if you're going full time your first year and there's COVID and you're like, well, I want to book weddings, but if I yeah. increase my prices, like, well, I still book them. I need to make my full time income. There's just so many thoughts going through mm-hmm, your mind, mm-hmm. right? So, what helped you from going from there to ha- like increasing us, increasing your rates in a strategic way, right? Um, to actually owning that pricing and being like, you know what, like I am worth it. And I do believe couples will actually book this. Like what (laughs) helped you get transform that mindset? Um, Maybe just more thinking about that for a long time. I mean, I just said, okay, Sam, now you're going to do something about your pricing. So I focused on that for one, two, three days, four days, just writing it down, uh, seeing that I could do something like that and I could be happy with uh, higher prices. So first of all, it was like, being able to perceive that I could increase my prices. And then what changed my mindset would be that just try it. I I would say, Um, I was like, okay, I need to try that. And if I don't book anyone for six months, I will just go back. And it was just, let's give it a try and we'll see what is going to happen. And actually after the coaching, uh, even if, We are in this very strange period with people not being able to think about weddings, to to be happy about organizing a wedding for next year. I even booked three weddings with these new prices. So it just was for me a gift to say, okay, Sam, you're right and you're doing something great with what you think. Yeah, I remember when you messaged me, Mm -hmm. you're like, Sarah, I, cause I always, I'm like, keep me updated. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you messaged me, you're like, Sarah, I booked a wedding, my new pricing. Mm-hmm, and then again, mm-hmm. you're like, I booked more. And I'm like, yeah. yes. And like, not only did you like learn, but you actually applied what you learned mm-hmm. and got uncomfortable and did the work. And that's why you yeah. saw results. And, and now mm-hmm. how do you, how, yeah, keep going, keep going. No, no, sorry. And uh, I wanted to say it was not a big jump for me because I tried to increase a bit less than what I wanted to do. And then I increased a bit more. So I was more comfortable doing that than doing a big jump in my prices. And yeah, for me, it was easier to do that in that way, but it was a a way to increase my prices. So for me, I was doing right. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think that's what we talked about. I was like, don't feel like you have to increase by, Mm -hmm. let's say you want to make, so you're um, in francs, but I'm just going to talk Canadian dollars. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's talk, let's say you want to make a thousand dollars more per collection. That's your goal. Don't think that, okay, you just have to raise it up to a thousand dollars. Like just start off with like increasing your uh, collections Mm -hmm. by like $200. And then you book two weddings, increase another 200. And uh, for those who are listening, um, if you listen to episode five of the Shine and Thrive podcast, I walk you through exactly the strategy that I do with this. And there's also a worksheet. So listen to that after this episode too, because that's exactly what Sam applied and it's Mm -hmm. working for her. And it's so fun to see that. Mm -hmm. And also I just was um, sure that I needed to increase my prices to live a better life next year and to just be more comfortable with the fact that I wanted to have more time for myself. And I needed also to increase my prices because actually with what I earned, I could just have an a cool life okay it was okay for me but just to be to to have more money I needed to actually increase my prices because I couldn't take more and more and more wedding because I would have too many weddings so it was like something I needed to do also yeah and that that too so it's like supply Mm -hmm. and demand if you're getting a lot of increase and looking quickly that is definitely a sign like raise your rates Mm -hmm. Um, also when it comes to, uh, again, mindset, right. I love how you just kind of said, I, I know that I'm worth it and I want a certain lifestyle and mm-hmm. like, I need that. And I'm going to create that for myself. Right. Do you feel like before when you were in fear, you were more focused on what if clients don't book? Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And can you see now if you're like, 
you don't think that way anymore. You think, but mm. what if they do book? Right? Yeah. And even if it's really difficult in this period to think this way, because we even are in a more difficult period than the years before and the other seasons, because we don't know how people is going to see their wedding. Actually, I have cancellations for January, for February, weddings which were booked and people say that, oh my God, I am too afraid about COVID because actually here it's a new lockdown in Switzerland. So people are very lost about what to do. So I even see that I book in these kind of situations so I'm like okay I will book in other uh, years and I am more happy about that and I am really more comfortable about uh, this fact yeah oh so are, are you saying that um so I'm trying to understand what you just said are you saying <laughs> you're are you still booking for 2021 or are you more just focusing on booking in 2022? No, I mean, I am still booking for yeah. 2021. And this is really uh, something that makes me happy because yeah. I'm like, okay, even if we are in a strange situation, we book for 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's, it makes me more comfortable about my prices and about everything. It's not big bookings because I mean, people are not focusing on or organizing a wedding right now, yeah. but yeah. One more and one more and one more. It makes us comfortable about what we do. Yeah, exactly. And I love your attitude about it. I mean, uh, the mm -hmm. way that I'm approaching the situation, I think is similar to you. I'm just like mm -hmm. moving forward with booking and I'm going with the season of the world we're in. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be straight up and honest when co like in this season, my pricing has gone down significantly because at one mm -hmm. point I think I was like 7,000 for like my... Uh, just my all day coverage. And mm -hmm. I lowered it uh, quite a lot. I think it's like 5,500 and at some points, even 5,000 just because mm -hmm. of the season we are in. So my pricing always shifts based on supply and demand and what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then that way you take your ego out of it. Like, Oh, I'm worth so much more. You're just like, these are the facts. Like people are probably less likely to book at this time at that rate. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Sarah, you can get to that price point in the future in two or three years again. But if you want those additional bookings for 2021, just lower it back down a little bit, see how mm -hmm. bookings go. If they're still really high, raise your rates again and just do that. And, and I think that if we just look at our pricing as fluid, instead of, this is our pricing. Um, I think it actually will lead us to go through the season of COVID and everything with more like calm and ease than mm -hmm. stress because we're thinking no one's booking at this price anymore. What am I yeah. going to do? Yeah. Just think of your bookings, wedding bookings as an average. So maybe mm -hmm. next year's average, if you lower your pricing now, just to get those bookings, maybe your average will be lower than last year's, but guess what? Maybe in uh, for you to book 2022 weddings now, raise your prices for 2022 like crazy because that's almost two years ahead of time. And mm -hmm. then your average that year can be higher. And just just think of it in that way instead of being going down that rabbit hole of like stress of like, mm -hmm. yeah. So do you feel like that's what you're doing now, Sam, too? Yeah, I think so. And also I started a lot of different things like creative things just to be more focused on other creative activities than on my contracts and on photography because I know that we are in the off season I don't know if you say yeah. that it's yeah, yeah, do, the yeah. off season yeah and right now uh, even with the lockdown we are not sure we are going to be able to work actually uh, outdoors or with people so I just started other things to be more focused on other creative things and be like okay if the contracts they came in it's okay it's I'm happy with that and if they don't I'm also happy with that and this is really comfortable to be able to do that this is very new for me and yeah I'm very happy about that that's awesome so are you um so what are some of these creative things that you're working on right now and is it to fuel is it to just keep you inspired and engaged or is it also as another way of earning income it's more the first reason because I don't earn money with that. But for me, it's totally fine because actually, even if I lost the half of my uh, year uh, of my season with uh, the, the half of the wedding, uh, with the wedding I've lost, sorry, mm -hmm. um, I've earned 
not a lot of money, but enough money to leave this year because people was very cool with me. They bought some uh, gifts, they bought some sessions, photo sessions. So I am happy with that today. I, I feel comfortable. I know that there are uh, less comfortable situations, so I don't have to blame or yeah, I don't have to be sad about my year, even if it was the half of it. Yeah. So right now I can do more creative things for myself to be happy. I write uh, stories for children. I have a podcast and I have mm, I have started that in the first lockdown. And now I am very happy with that. It's in French actually, but I am having nearly a hundred thousand of uh, listeners. And this is just crazy because wow. I started that uh, six months ago. And tonight I am at 99K of listeners. And it's wow. just so, so, so crazy. And I'm like, okay, this, yeah, it's, it's fulfilling me with happiness. And it's so, so cool. Sam, that's amazing. And I love, I love that you share this and not only mm -hmm. a way like, I love that you share this because I think what can happen in life is life can go by so quickly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then our memories are just maybe of us working or always chasing, mm -hmm. like making that money or whatever. When do we actually get the gift to slow down? And again, everyone is in a different storm. Like there are some people mm -hmm. that literally, I understand you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, right? That's I it. Yeah. feel for you. And there are some people that are like, okay, I made half the income. It's not... Mm -hmm what I wanted. It's going to be a little harder this year, but you know what, compared to other people, I'm good. And like, you're one of those people and you're yeah. finding an opportunity, um, in that to still mm -hmm. take in the season somehow. So I really hope for everyone out there listening, whatever storm you're going through, think of it as like, let's say you live for a hundred years. If this ends up being two to three year chapter, mm -hmm two to three years out of your whole life, if you just slow down for that time, if you can, right, do whatever you can when you can, right, to so just really be and try new experiences and mm -hmm. get to know yourself, maybe yeah. try out other goals and hobbies that you don't have time for before, I think mm -hmm. it will generate more energy for you to propel yourself forward in the future more, right, and, mm -hmm. and that's incredible that like something that you're doing just as like, that fuels your soul is now like mm -hmm. so many people are tuning in to yeah. you congratulations that is thank you <laughs> i'm very happy about that and it's totally what you say i'm telling people all the time to be creative and to ha use this kind of time to be more creative and make things even if they are not creative things but maybe walk outdoors make sport and do just things for ourselves and yeah take this time to think about ourselves and I know it's not easy in the first two days I cried a lot I was very afraid because I've lost a lot of money with those 12 weddings it's yeah, yeah. if I I look what I lose uh, I'll become crazy I just have a look at what I earned. I'm like, okay, I can pay my bills. So it's not so bad. And yeah, I try to do other things than early money to feel for my, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Your perspective shift. If you stayed focused on what you were lacking, you would have gone mm -hmm. down a deeper, darker oh, hole. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And instead you chose to focus on your abundance and what you could do with it. It's not mm -hmm. easy, but I tried. Yeah, yeah. way to go. I totally get it. You're trying to get noticed and you don't know how. I mean, raise your hand if wondering where your next booking will come from keeps you up at night. I know how that feels like. I was there once too. But I'm about to help you get clear on how to increase your bookings and inquiries. After coaching many portrait and wedding photographers, I realized they all had one thing in common that was holding them back from booking their dream clients. They didn't know how to market themselves. Once they got clarity on how to show up and put what they learned from me into action, they began to book more of their dream clients. And now I'm excited to help you do the same. So I've created a mini course called Crystal Clear Marketing to, you guessed it, help you get crystal clear on how to attract and book your dream clients. I mean, the year I implemented this, my revenue grew from $69,000 to $137,000 in just one year. So if I can do it, 
you can do it too. So in case you're wondering, inside of the Crystal Clear Marketing mini course, I share how to optimize your website so that more of your dream clients inquire and book, how to go from being a generalist to becoming a specialist, and why it matters, how to find out who you are at your core and fuse it fearlessly into your business. Also, how to show up on IG so you attract quality followers. That's so important. How to make the money you deserve while feeling fulfilled with your work and how to make marketing effortless and fun because it should be. Running our business should be fun. So what I'm so excited to share with you is that I've made this very affordable. So to get all the deets and enroll in this mini course, go to saramonica.com forward slash crystal clear. Again, head over to saramonica.com forward slash crystal clear. I cannot wait to see you in there. Okay. I also wanted to ask you, Mm -hmm. is there any other perspective shifts that you had? Cause I know we did like a whole like website review and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other like nuggets or takeaways that you had that really helped shift the way that you document weddings or the way you approach booking clients or showing up um, as a photographer online? Uh, you mean by the coaching or I, uh, sorry, I, uh, I yeah. didn't get. Yeah. From, so when we did like a little bit of like your mm-hmm. website review and stuff and yeah. portfolio and how to show up with your photography and what images to focus on showing, did you have any like nuggets and perspective shifts that now you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that I now have this mm-hmm. perspective. Cause I'm oh, you mean I changed excited. something after the coaching. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about the fact that I wasn't really showing what I actually did in my photography business because I am really documenting weddings because I was a journalist before and in my journalist job, I had to document things. So I, I wanted to tell stories in my wedding, to document people, to share those things also on my website and you focused on that you said me that you told me that I needed to show it more because I actually had those photos in my portfolio but I showed only beautiful and perfect photos like okay this is the perfect lightning this is the perfect spot and I used to share only those photos with beautiful people everyone is beautiful I mean but with perfect lightning that's what I I wanted to Mm say and yeah I shifted that because now I share more um, real moments and things I take during the weddings that maybe are not with the perfect light, but I feel something emotional in the photos. And yeah, I I changed that on my website, actually, after the coaching with you. (laughs) And how did you feel that that did that have any sort of like transformation or result with Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because when people contact me, they say, oh, I am very happy because I found you on Instagram or on the website. And I have seen that you do emotional photos, you do uh, uh, documentary weddings, and they focus on that. I'm like, okay, this is exactly what uh, this is totally what I want to share with people. And they uh, really um, like one day after I changed that I had the first comment. So people noticed that I wanted to, to share more of those moments. And they were like, okay, I like that. So I come to you for that. Yeah. And I found that so amazing. I remember when you were, I was trying to dive into understanding really what you were passionate about documenting on wedding days. And then I looked at your website and it was totally opposite. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) Sam, you're totally out of alignment. You're saying you want one thing and Mm -hmm. you're passionate about one thing, but you're showing a different thing. I'm like, as soon as you change this, man, your business, like things are going to really shift. So I'm so happy to hear that. Like, that's so amazing. And yeah, I love your, the moments you capture. It's been so fun to see those. Thank you. (laughs) And okay. So we have like, thank you so much for like sharing. There's like so many nuggets of wisdom wisdom that we went through. I think I want to just kind of like finish it off with asking, um, what do you wish you would have known when you first started out as a wedding photographer? 
I actually shared that on Instagram because I think that we don't share that uh, so many times. It's uh, what we talked before. It's just about the fact that we are not comfortable with sharing with other photographers. I would have known that it's okay to talk to, uh, to other photographers. It's okay to ask questions to ask questions to other photographers and yeah it's something we can do even if we start in the photography business and seven years ago I was not it was not easy to talk to other photographers because sometimes they were like no you're going to copy me or you're going to yeah to to take my job and something like that and not everyone is like that and not everyone is going to react that way. Some are going to, but it's not the big part of photo of people in the photography business. And I would have been more happy in the beginning if, um, yeah, if someone told me that. Yeah, I, I can totally relate to you because when I first started, I tried going at this alone, like just mm -hmm. me in my office trying to Google everything. I didn't know there was a photography community that existed on Facebook and all these mm -hmm. different like Facebook groups and stuff like that. I did not know. And it took so much longer to mm -hmm. get ahead than if we just found that community, start asking yeah. questions whenever we feel stuck. So that's a, a great piece of advice. Um, and I love that also that you said like people fear of maybe someone copying them. Mm -hmm. Just remember, this is something that I like had to learn. Like if someone tries to copy you, just remember they're a copy and a copy is never good as the original. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. if try someone's trying to copy you, they actually can't copy you because they don't know why you do what you do mm -hmm. and exactly the way you do it and the soul that you bring to your work and everything like that. So there's really nothing to fear except nope. fear itself. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my gosh damn I had so much fun chatting with you I love these Me kinds too. of conversations thanks so much for opening up I'm sure Thank you're you. gonna help inspire a lot of photographers just to like yeah choose the perspective they choose to feel and then mm -hmm. be in action with and also not to feel so alone right because like you said you really valued like community and other listening mm. to other photographers and learning from them too. So thank you so, so much for your time and that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so, okay. Where can everybody find you and your work? And also because of the podcast, in case there is someone that knows French and has kids and all of that, yeah. share your podcast too. Really <laughs> yeah. With pleasure. It's still in French, but it's fine. Maybe they will start to learn French with yeah. the podcast. It could be <laughs> great. <laughs> so um, for the photography, it's Samian Photo. So S-A-M-Y-A-N photo in French. So P-H-O-T-O. Uh, this is for the Instagram and for the website. It's Samian Photography in French. Ch because I am in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and yeah, for the child podcasts, it's more <laughs> difficult because it's the stories of no no in French les histoires de no no. So yeah, this is not so easy. But if you go in, on my Instagram, on my photography Instagram, you will find the link to that if you want to hear something in French. <laughs> okay, perfect. And yeah, whoever speaks French and is listening to this podcast, like they'll understand that they'll easily be searching it right now. So yes, that's awesome. And just repeat, repeat your Instagram, uh, just in case one more time. Yes, it's Samian Photo, Samian Photo at Samian Photo, S-A-M-Y-A-N, photo in French. Okay, perfect. Yay. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, so thank cool. you so much. <laughs> I can't wait to see you keep growing and can't wait to stay connected. There you have it. That was my episode with Sam. I hope this gave you a perspective of what's possible for you and that maybe you're not the only one feeling these things and that we all go through you know, feeling afraid to get to the next level, raising our prices and not sure how to do it. Um, but there is a way to do that. There is a way to strategically make sure you do it in a safe way where, you know, it doesn't cost you bookings. You know, it actually increases your chances of bookings as well as increases how much you make per booking. So if you're interested in me helping you out with that, I'm obsessed with strategizing about pricing with photographers. I love helping photographers get more bookings. So head over to Sarah Monica dot com forward slash coaching and book your session with me and I can make sure to get you all prepped. Booking season is around the corner. I do believe a lot of couples will be booking 2022 weddings now kind of in advance. 
Um, so that's a really good opportunity for that. And I do think that a lot of couples are going to be booking 2021 weddings with the thought in mind that they're just going to be keeping them intimate. And if anything, they're going to make it a very intimate affair or an elopement. So there's still wedding bookings to be had for 2021. So make sure to get your pricing set up right now so that you can, you know, make that happen in your business. Book those weddings. Okay. Also on top of that, don't forget to join the Shine and Thrive podcast community. It's a space where I'm going to be going live once every two weeks, answering your questions. And I'm also going to be including like weekly motivation in there, different content that you see um, on Instagram and on the podcast. So you're definitely going to get a lot more inspiration there. And you're going to be part of a community. You get to interact with other photographers that are like-minded, driven, positive, and I made sure to cultivate a safe space as well. There's no trolling, negativity. There's It's full of inclusivity, no racism, no negativity like that. I want to make sure it's a positive, productive space. Okay. So I would love to see you there. So make sure to head over to Sarah Mon- or ugh, wrong, wrong thing. So go to Facebook, uh, type in shine and thrive podcast community and request to be a part and be a member. So that's all friends. I cannot wait to connect with you in the community and I can't wait to connect with you in the next podcast episode. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and tuning into this episode. If you got value out of it, please feel free to message me on Instagram at Sarah Monica Photo. That's Sarah No H Monica with a K photo to let me know. I get so freaking energized hearing from others that what I've said has had a positive impact on their lives. Also, make sure to hit subscribe to the Shine and Thrive podcast to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful for you and I'm sending you all the productive vibes your way so you have the best week ever. 